Hey everyone at home and wherever you are. I am Miss Jamie and this is another Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to be discussing objects near and far and the difference between sizes when you have something close to you as opposed to when you have something far away. So to demonstrate this, we'll pull up a, a quick little animation. You can see we have a tree, and when you're looking at it, when it's right beside you, you know, it looks much bigger. But then if you take it and say, push it to the background some, you see it back, uh, that same size tree on a hill, you'll notice it's a little bit smaller. And what we're talking about when things are larger close up as opposed to when they're smaller further away is uh, referred to as perspective. So we're going to work with some of that today in creating a forest scene. So we're going to start off with our Jumbo Jet Black Pencil and we're going to create these downward curving triangles here. Just getting wider at the bottom for this tree. Do the same off to the other side, mimicking the lines we've already created. Now I'm going to go back here and create a little bit of a shorter tree because it's behind our foreground tree and it's just a little bit further off in the distance. Not by much, just a little. So I'm going to start the top here and do our little sideways triangles come off to the side here and pull it in there. And I'm going to go ahead and add a trunk to the bottom of this tree and a trunk to the bottom of this tree. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a ground plane, just the center line going through the back here just a hill starting here and then come to the other side of this grouping of trees and start it coming over here. So now we're going to start to want to focus on the trees that are further in the background that we're going to have start over here. So these are going to be much smaller guys but we're going to want to make sure that everybody knows that these are in the distance and they're the same trees as these. So we're going to mimic these shapes but make them smaller over here. So start with our little jagged sides. Alright. And we'll add another one. I think I'm going to want to add another tree a little closer. So I'm going to start the top up here and I'm going to have it go off the page just because I think that's going to look interesting for the composition as a whole for the picture. Sometimes it's just fun to have your subject not completely in the middle and not always completely on the paper. Sometimes it's interesting just to have a little bit of your subject showing. Let's see, I think I'm going to want to stick another little tree back here behind all these other guys. Maybe one more. I want this forest to be a little bit thicker. Then I'm going to add the trunks for each tree. Just some little rectangles. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead, just while I'm thinking about it, erase this part of the hill. 
because we don't need to see that. That was just to help us see where that ground plane was. And we don't want those showing in the middle of our trees. Okay. Remember, you can lightly tap your paper if you need to to get rid of those extra shavings. We're going to get those off the table so that we have a clean work area again. All right. And let's see, I'm going to carefully add in another hill in our background, just curving around the trees, and then they're going to disappear behind these woods here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some fun, wavy motions and create a mountainscape in the background. Now I'm going to get smaller in the middle and taller as they come up the sides here. Okay, now remember we've been talking about objects being larger when they're closer to us and smaller the farther they get away. And in perspective, if we have a river, you're going to have the river looking as though it's much wider the closer you're standing to it. And then when you watch it go off in the distance, it's going to get much thinner. So we're going to do that for a winding river in our picture. We're going to start by going with a fun whoosh around the side here. And then starting maybe just an inch or so right here at the top of this hill. We're going to do the same whoosh, but it's going to get wider the closer it comes to us. So then in the background here, we're going to repeat that same idea, but with just a slightly less uh, exaggerated whoosh. So just a nice curve. I remember smaller at the top because it's farther away. And then another little whoosh and wider towards the bottom. All right. So now we have our outlines drawn and we're going to go ahead and color in with our colored pencils. Let's see. So I'm going to pick out my greens. And I'm going to use my Cezanne color pencils and start off with this really pretty vibrant green here. And when, when using your uh, colored pencils, remember if you point straight down, you're going to have a much thinner line. And if you want to color in broader areas of color, you want to use the side of your pencil because then you have more of the lead to work with and you can color in larger areas much more quickly. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see how I'm holding my pencil. And going in the same direction too. This way you don't end up with every uh, with all your strokes being jumbled and then you end up with a nice unified picture at the end if you keep your strokes um, going in the same direction. And I'm also holding my paper just to help it stay in place because I am applying pressure to the paper and the paper will go everywhere sometimes if I'm not hanging on to it.
remember, your grass does not have to be green like mine. Um, perhaps you have a fantasy world in your head, a fantasy forest, and you have purple grass. Maybe your trees are pink or blue. This is your drawing. You can do your tree, your uh, perspective drawing, however you would like to do it. All right. So I'm gonna choose, let's see, a different green for these trees. When you're using the side of your color pencil and you've been uh, coloring for a little while, you'll notice that your lead starts to sort of uh, shorten, decrease on one side. So you may want to just roll it over just a little bit and start over with a fresh edge and keep going. And finally, I'm going to come in with this pretty blue and color in our river. And you can rotate your paper if you need to. If you find that you're starting to get tired going in one direction or another. And also, you can take a break and come back to it. You don't have to color it all in one sitting. 
if you get most of it done and, and find that you're getting tired, feel free to just take a moment, step away and come back. It'll still be there waiting for you. Okay, so now we have our forest drawn in perspective and if you are happy with your picture the way it is and you don't want to uh, do anything else to it, you can stop right here. However, if you want to continue playing along with me and uh, test out the watercolor pencil technique, then just follow right along and we'll get right into it. So the fun about uh, watercolor color pencils is that we really just need, we already have our, our color down and we really just need to add water. And you can create all sorts of fun techniques and we're just going to start experimenting by adding some uh, water down here to our picture and see what happens. Remember, you want your brush to be saturated but not too much so I'm sticking my brush in the water and then just dabbing off here on the side. And I come into the trees. And I'm just gonna keep pulling the color around until my brush starts to dry out and you'll feel it start to dry out and you'll notice your color isn't getting pulled as much, and then dip back into the water and come back. And I'm just going along with the lines that I've already created. Again, so that we don't have our drawings looking messy with strokes going in every which direction, like a crazy whirlwind came through these trees. And adding water just gives it kind of this really pretty effect like you might get with watercolors. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to go exactly to the lines. You don't have to, or the outside lines of your drawing. You don't have to try to create flat um, planes of color. Sometimes having all these different variations, like you can see in my uh, drawing here, you can still see some of the, the um, uh, pencil marks as well. It just creates this really unique and interesting texture. It makes the painting your own. I'm gonna go back here and Continue doing this with our trees that are farther away. Dip in the water. And dip. And now I'm gonna switch to working on my uh, forward ground plane here. And 
even even though you're not pulling up much color when you're working with these with your paintbrush you still might end up having a little bit of the color on your brush so you want to make sure that you rinse it off and dab it on a paper towel you may be able to see it but you can see just a little bit of green in there and I just want to make sure that that gets off before I start working on another color Okay, so I'm going to go in and add a broad wash here in the front with the water. with a different section of our painting. So again, just gonna clean off our brush and dip back into the water. Now we have our completed landscape in, in perspective and we've had fun uh, trying out you know what we can do with these watercolor color pencils. Um, I hope you have had as much fun working on this project as I have. Don't forget to go outside, look around your house for examples of perspective and see how different things look when they're closer to you and farther away and I can't wait to see you on the next Art Explorations for Kids. Bye, guys.